What's good everyone, it's the one and only NY Phenom. If you guys enjoy NFL, NBA content, want to see some gaming content in the near future, give us a video a like, and if you're new, go and subscribe to the channel while you have it. Now let's go ahead and let's get into this video. Alright, so we got another team preview, and it's the last one in the AFC East, man. Of course, the division champions, the conference champions, and the Super Bowl champions. <laughs> We're doing the 2019-2020 New England Patriots team preview, man. And, um, yeah, you know, is there really that much to speak on when it comes to the New England Patriots? I mean, we know what we're getting every single year. They're here. They're going to dominate the AFC East. They got Brady. They got Belichick. Automatic 11 to 12 wins. And route to the Super Bowl. We know what's going to happen. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, I could just sum it up like that. But we just going ahead. We just going to do a slight. NFL preview for the New England Patriots, man. Before I get into my Patriots um, team preview, though, I want to say go check out all the ones I've done before. I've done all uh, all the other teams in the AFC East. I've done the AFC North. And now I'm doing the Patriots, man. So let's go ahead and finish up the AFC East. And let's go ahead, like we always do, we're going to start and talk about the offense because we already know what comes to with the coach, man. Bill Belichick, one of the greatest NFL coaches of all time, maybe the greatest if you talk to a few, um, few people. Um, it's tough. You got Bill Parcells, you got uh, Bill Walsh, you got a few coaches that come in mind, but you can make a case that Bill Belichick is the greatest NFL coach of all time. So, I mean. That's pretty much all we got to speak about Bill Belichick. Um, but the offense, though, it's going to speak with Tom Brady, who you could make a case are, who a lot of people think is the greatest player of all time. I think a lot of people, and I think almost everyone would say that he's the greatest quarterback of all time. Um, me, I think I'll probably have to go with Tom Brady's the best quarterback of all time. I mean, you know, you got Joe Montana or whatever, but that's a, fun, a whole entire other video. I'm getting sidetracked right now. But you got Tom Brady. Um... Is there really much to speak about Tom Brady, one of the best quarterbacks that we have in the NFL right now? Um, he's just he's gonna be Tom Brady, man. Um, I know a lot of people think that he might slow down, which you know what, he probably already has slowed down. Um, of course, he don't have the arm strength that he had in 05 and 06 and 07. Of course, he's he's getting older, but he still has enough arm strength to make the plays that he needs to um, make. I mean, he's still accurate. Short passes, intermediate passes, can make all the reads. I mean, he has probably the best awareness out of all quarterbacks in the NFL. I mean, and Tom Brady just gets things done, man. I'm not worried about Tom Brady. All right, so Tom Brady's going to be Tom Brady. Their running game, their running backs, we already know. Sonny Michel, in my opinion, is a monster. Super underrated. I don't, I don't know why people don't give uh, Sonny Michelle is props and maybe maybe Patriots fans do and maybe some of the football heads that know football like us maybe we do but look Sonny Michelle played a big part on the Super Bowl run and he was a rookie last year and came up and played and played the running back position well man he was the the power running back ran between the tackles I mean Sonny Michelle is a monster man um you know I expect to see the same. I mean, I can see him making the leap to being maybe a Pro Bowl caliber running back this year. I don't know if that's a stretch. Is that a stretch? I don't think so. I like how he can run in between the tackles. And then we already know about James White. Catch the ball at the backfield. Um, makes a big play. Shifty, elusiveness. You know what you get from James White. Um, Let's go to wide receiver. Um, the wide receiver position, man. Um course they add they drafted kill harry who was the second wide receiver drafted they drafted him in the first round and that was odd man the pages rarely ever draft uh wide receivers in the first round especially in the first round man so you know they definitely saw something special on the kill harry and i was watching some highlights man i, I don't really watch for people who don't know me i really don't watch college football really haven't sat down and really watched college football since like 2000 13, 14 ish, whatever. But anyway, I don't watch college football, but but I was watching some of the Kill Harry uh, tape, and I, I just saw, man, this dude's a monster, man. This dude 
He can be a possession wide receiver. He can make the big plays. He has good route running. This dude's going to be a monster, man. You giving him somebody like Brady, who hasn't really had a real outside threat. Like, last year was his real outside threat. I mean, he had Josh Gordon for a bit. That was his real outside threat, and then he got suspended, which we're going to about to speak about Josh Gordon in a little bit, though. Uh, so, you got Nikhil Harry. You have... Um, Philip Dorsett, who runs that deep route. And of course, you got the Super Bowl MVP from last year, Julian Edelman, one of the best slot receivers in the NFL. And he's going to do his thing in the slot. Uh, this guy stay away from those PED suspensions. <laughs> you got to stay away from those PED suspensions, Julian Edelman. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, Julian Edelman is going to do his thing in the slot. And then they even brought in Demarius Thomas, and that hasn't got that much shine, man. For you guys who don't know, I know Demarius Thomas is getting up your age, but man, you, if you're giving Demarius Thomas a quarterback like Brady, we know what Demarius Thomas can do. Like, back in those 2013-14 seasons, dude dominated, man. When you gave him a quarterback like Peyton Manning, he was up there as one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. You know what I'm saying? Once when Peyton Manning left and Peyton Manning retired, uh, his production started dropping better course, but I'm, I think we could see a resurgence of Demarius Thomas being not maybe not as good as he was before being a top 10 wide receiver, but he can be a really, really, <laughs> really, really good wide receiver. Like This wide receiver group is insane, and I even got to the fact, which I'm about to speak on right now, is that Josh Gordon, they are actually interested in bringing Josh Gordon if he can come back from the suspension. Can you imagine a wide receiver group of Julian Elderman, Nikhil Harry, Philip Dorsett, Demarius Thomas, and then you add Josh Gordon? I think that would probably have to be the best wide receiver group in the NFL. Dude, I don't think Brady has had, has had that much talent on a wide receiver group ever. I can't think of a time where he's had this much talent on a wide receiver group, man. Of course, he had Moss in 07. But it was Moss, and he had Star Wars back then, or whatever, man, Wes Walker. So maybe then, maybe then. So you give him Brady now, a wide receiver group that I just named, possibly with Josh Gordon coming back. I think that would just be insane. You have um, the running back duo of Sonny Michelle and James White, great running back duo. And then, I didn't even speak about the offensive line. The offensive line, of course, is going to be good. The, the Patriots offensive line is always solid. They have a great offensive line. Uh, coach um, Marcus Cannon, really good. Off, uh, offensive tackle, David Andrews, really good. Center. I mean, and they even got the young guy who, who missed last year. I believe he missed last year. And Isaiah Wine, who was supposed to start over Trent Brown, but Isaiah Wine got injured last year, so he had a miss last season, and that's why they moved Trent Brown. Now Trent Brown's in Oakland, but this offensive line is a top ten offensive line in the NFL. They're not going to have Brady getting hit at all. But you know, I, that's just all the praises on the offense. But there is one specific position that that's like a huge hole on this team, a huge weak spot on this team. And that's the tight end position, man. Of course, we know Rob Gronkowski, Gronk, he retired, man. And there's some talks about him retire, uh, coming back out of retirement. And I actually made a video about that a little while a little while back. But in my opinion, I think Gronk is done. I think he's retired for real. I think he's hanging it up. I think he's in Hollywood, just enjoying his life. We all know about Gronk. He loves a party. He lo you know, I don't think Gronk wants to come back because people don't realize, man, you just can't come back in the NFL. I mean, yeah, we got people coming out of retirement. Sometimes, of course, we got Marshawn Lynch came out of retirement a few years back to join Oakland. Uh, of course, Jason Witten just came out of retirement um, to come back and play with the Cowboys. And then uh, DRC. I know a lot of people haven't talked about that. DRC, Donnie Rogers Camardi, came back out of retirement to um, play with the Redskins. But, you know, I think Gronk is done. I think he's in Hollywood, getting ready to become a, become a universal champion in WWE. 
I think that's I think that's what's gonna happen. But anyway, I think Gronk is done. And Benjamin Watson, he's suspended for the first four, four games. So that was they brought him in, but he's suspended for the first four games. And that's another player who came out of retirement. Benjamin Watson retired. He came out of retirement, joined the Patriots, and now he's suspended for the first four games. Then they brought in Severian Jenkins early in the free early in the all season. And he was supposed to be the other tight end to pair with Benjamin Watson, but he just quit. He did he just left the NFL. He you know he just didn't want to be part of the NFL grind or whatever. I don't know what's going on. Maybe some personal issues that's going on. But you don't have Austin Severia Jenkins. So you you the tight end position is like a huge hole. You're gonna be out of Benjamin Watson who's, who's even getting up there in age. You will probably have to even pair another wide, another tight end uh, with Benjamin Watson, and you know he's suspended for the first four games. Um, of course, we know about Michael Roberts. The Patriots were really trying to get Michael Roberts, but he failed his physical. So the tight end position is a big mess right now, and that that might come back and haunt them. Um, maybe that's why the wide receiver group just looks that insane is because they don't have a tight end and it's going to be like the first time in the world that Tom Brady doesn't have a real tight end man and but I think the wide receiver group can hold it on can hold their own for at least the first four games and then Benjamin Watson can come back and be a decent receiving threat for Tom Brady um you know mm -hmm. Benjamin Watson's up there. Now, I really wouldn't expect that much from Benjamin Watson. Decent blocker. And pretty reliable. Catching an open pass. He dropped a few in, in New Orleans last year. But, I mean, yeah, I guess that's the best option you guys can go with, man. At least he's used to the uh, Brady and Belichick system, I guess. But anyway, man, I got fun find something for that tight end position. I even saw that Jordan Reed from the Redskins was on a trading block. Would that be crazy if the Patriots were somehow to find a way to make a move for Jordan Reed? That would just be unfair. Hopefully that doesn't happen for just the competition for the NFL. But anyway, that's all we had to speak on the, on the offense. Even though with that big hole or that tight end position, this is still a top 10, maybe top 5 offense in the NFL. Um, just their running you got Brady, you got those two, that running back duo, and then you got that wide receiver, that wide receiver group, man. And with the offensive line, it's still a top 10, maybe top five offense in the NFL. Now, they can find a tight end to come in and be reliable. Well, for Benjamin and Watson, or are they going to actually need a tight end to come out week one? This might be the top offense in the NFL, but anyway. That's for the offense. I can speak about this offense all the, you know, the, the, for an entire day. But let's go ahead and speak on this defense, man, because I do have to speak on this defense. Of course, we know Belichick. He's a defensive mastermind. He proved that in the Super Bowl. Um, Jared Goff and the Rams. They could only get three points on the Patriots. That says it all. But. Let's speak on this defense, man. I want to speak on this defensive line. I always start off with the defensive line. And um, this defensive line is interesting, man. Um, you still got Lance Guy, Danny Shelton. They even brought in Michael Bennett, which was huge. Um, they brought in Michael Bennett because they did lose some defensive ends, man. They lost a Trey Flowers, which is huge. Trey Flowers played a big part on this defensive line. They lost Adrian Claiborne, who went back to the Falcons. Um, they, they lost them. That's two really solid defensive ends, especially Trey Flowers. So they lost, they lost Trey Flowers. And I think it was a, I think the Patriots, they should have went after Jerry McCoy, man. Um, Jerry McCoy, I made a bunch of Jerry McCoy videos to start, um, um, earlier, um, or a little while back. Um, and... I mentioned that the Patriots should have been one of the um, main teams to go out and try to sign a Jared McCoy. Try to bring in a Jared McCoy. That defensive tackle position is looking kind of, well, I won't say suspect, but it can improve. Danny Shelton is a pretty good run stopper. He's a big body. Lawrence Guy is a pretty good pass rusher. He's 
decent. But look, if you if they were able to bring a Gerald McCoy who can just solidify that defensive line, this defense, we were probably talking about a top five, top 10 defense. But, you know, they couldn't bring in Gerald McCoy. And now I'm kind of worried about this defensive line. I really am. Uh, Michael Bennett, you know, for you guys that don't know, I'm a Seahawks fan. I know how big Michael Bennett is. And I think Michael Bennett is, is going to play a big part of this defensive line. They're really going to need Michael Bennett to show up. And I think he will. But, I mean, just a lot of question marks on that defensive line, man. Are the, especially that other, the left defensive end position. Um, there's a big hole there. They need to fix that out. And, um, yeah, there's really not that many moves they can make. So, they're going to have to, the Belichick's going to have to find a way to work this defensive line out. So, that's going to be interesting how he works the defensive line out. The linebacker position is pretty much looking the same. Of course, they got Dante Hightower. So, they got their, um, they still got their um, linebacker uh, when their main linebacker's there. Uh, they got Odin Roberts, who's decent. And you got Kyle Van, uh, Kyle Van Noy. Um, so linebacker position is looking the same, but they did bring in Jamie Collins. And for you guys who don't know Jamie Collins, he played for the Browns for like the past two years. Was actually traded by the Patriots a few years back to the Browns. So he's used to the Patriots system. And everybody, for you guys who don't know Jamie Collins, Jamie Collins has a lot of talent, man. And Patriots fans will tell you this, man. Um, his production drop, of course, with the Browns was, uh, was banged up a bit. But they know a, a healthy Jamie Collins has a lot of talent. So, look, with the defensive line struggles on this team, do, you, do we think that the Patriots might move to a 3-4 defense? Um, because that left defensive end position is pretty suspect, right? I think they should move to a 3-4 defense. So you got Michael Bennett. You have a Lear's guard, and you have a Danny Shelton. Three solid defense um, of linemen, you know, so, and you got a good linebacker. For, I just named four uh, starting linebackers there, you know, in a Dante Hightower, uh, a Kyle Van Noy, a Eldon Roberts, and a Jamie Collins. So, in my opinion, I think the Belichick, uh, Belichick should run a 3-4 defense. Now, whether if he does that or not, we'll see, but... Um, a 3-4 defense has a lot of potential for the upcoming season. So, we'll see what's good with that. The linebacking core is like actually looking pretty good. So, we'll see what's good with that. Now, let's talk about the secondary, man. And this is like the biggest strong point of this team, man. This secondary is elite, man. This is what really carried the Patriots, man. This secondary. And we can start off with Stephon Gilmore. We know about the big play that Stephon Gilmore makes. Probably a top five cornerback in the NFL by most people. This dude is a real lockdown cornerback. And, you know, they're going to throw him on your best wide receiver, and he's going to shut it down on one side. That's what Stephon Gilmore does, and that's what he'll do. But you also got Jason McCourty there on the other side. And Duke Dawson, he played pretty well. Got a few um, young guys, you know, got... Made a few good plays, but their most underrated position in the secondary, we can talk about Stephon Gilmore and Jason McCourty all day, but let's speak about that safety position, man. Their safety position is, Belichick will tell you, man, Belichick will say that their safety position is one of their most underrated spots on their team, man, and their safeties are Devin McCourty and Patrick Chung, man. We already know Patrick Chung, he's a veteran, he's just one of the the leaders on this defense. I mean, he's been on that Patriots system for so long. Um, so you got Patrick Chung, and then you got Devin McCourty. Two very solid safeties, man. Two very solid safeties, man. So it, 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 the secondary is elite, man. The secondary is elite, and 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 if this defense line can get any type of pressure on the quarterback and force the quarterback to make passes that he doesn't want to make. This secondary is going to make plays all season, man. 
They're going to make plays all season. And it's going to be a nightmare. It's going to be a nightmare for some offenses. So, um, that's pretty much all I really got to speak on the defense, man. We know that Belichick is going to shut it down on defensive side. I expect the Patriots defense to be a top 15 to top 10 defense this year. That's my expectations on his defensive side. Now, yards-wise, because a lot of people look at yards and just make that and just think that's all about defense. Now, um, maybe they give up a few yards because teams are going to be playing down because you all know about Tom Brady. They're going to get the early lead, 14-0. So maybe they give up a lot of yards, but these, this defense is probably not going to give up that many points, man. So um, this defense is looking really good. I wish they could have probably went out to Jared McCoy. That would make the defense probably elite. But I say their defense is really good. But, I mean, that's the defense, man. Really nothing much to talk about. But since we're done, we went over the office, went over the defense. Now it's um, time to rank this team in tiers, man. You guys already know it's tier from tier one to tier five. Tier one is elite. Tier five is the wackest teams. And this, the Patriots, are going to be the first elite team, man. How could I not put them in the elite category, man? First of all, they're the, defending, they're the defending champions. So there's already one reason to put them in the elite time. But this coming into the season, man, they really don't have that many holes, man. Besides that tight end position, there's really not that many holes in this team. Maybe you can say on the defensive line, like I, maybe you can say a defensive line is another hole. But, you know, tight end is on the only major hole. And when we're talking about Tom Brady... Belichick, they're due to, uh, they're a championship contender every single year. So it's no question. They're an elite team. Patriots fans, NFL fans. I know, I know there's a lot of Patriots haters there. And, you know, if I was you, I mean, they're, they're in the Super Bowl pretty much every single year. So there's reason to hate. But, I mean, let, let's face the facts, man. Let's face the facts, man. It's, the Patriots, they're going to be elite as long as Tom Brady and Belichick is there. Like, point blank, period, man. So, let's just give the Patriots their respect. And let's just let's just enjoy the Patriots dynasty while we're still here. Well, why, why hate on it and, and wish that you guys would enjoy Tom Brady while he's still playing? Just enjoy it while he's still playing. Because Tom Brady's not going to play for that much longer. Belichick might not coach for that much longer. Let's enjoy him while he's there. So, Patriots, no question, they're an elite team. And there's really no debating that. But that's pretty much the AFC East, man. I finished the AFC East. That's crazy. We just did the AFC East, and we did the AFC North before. Just finished, I already finished two, two divisions, man. Finished eight out of 32 teams, man. Salute to everybody that's here. Um, showing love on the team previews. I love all of y'all, man. Really, really do, man. But um, like I say all my videos, dude, man, if you guys enjoy NFL, NBA content, want to see some gaming content in the near future, give this video a like. And if you're new, go and subscribe to the channel while you're at it. I'm the Phenomenal One, and I'm out. Deuces.